Well, greetings to all and welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are looking at the book of First Samuel chapter 17 that houses the story of a boy in his youth by the name of David versus a giant called Goliath. It says in verse 4, Verses 4 through 7, actually. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and a shield bearer went before him. Goliath was labeled by society and those who knew him because of his many victories in battle as the undisputed, undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world. Let me add to that, he was even scarier than the Terminator. Verse 4 called him champion. In verses 8 through 10 it reads, Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you, the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. In verses eight through 10, we can also conclude that not only did Goliath's community place him on a pedestal. But Goliath himself also spoke with a very high level of confidence and conviction regarding his own ability. And he was hard mouth, bad to the bone, and he knew it. And guess what? He did this rightfully so, because he had the track record to prove his status as the most skillful warrior of that time. Verse 11 reads, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Verse 11 proves that Goliath's words had a way of striking terror in the hearts of those who heard and listened to his many threats and who wouldn't be afraid of a giant who has never lost a fight. However, this story writes of a boy, the youngest of eight boys to be exact, who saw himself differently than every other Israelite contender of Goliath. You see, in verse 24, it tells us that every man of Israel who saw Goliath fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. They did this even after being promised so many gifts in verse 25 if they fought Goliath and won. And it shall be that the man who kills him the king will enrich with great riches, 
forgave him his daughter and gave his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Even with all of this, the Israelites still ran scared. In verse 28, when this young boy David came out to the battlefield for his usual visit and started inquiring about Goliath, one of his older brothers who went out to fight in the army of Saul against Goliath became angry with him, fussed at him, insulted him because he was a mere boy with absolutely no warring experience, according to them, and falsely accused David, who was operating in faith and vision of having pride and insolence. Moving on to verse 29, David, you know, he just kind of shrugs his shoulders and he's like, well, what did I do? You know? Anyway, King Saul heard about David and decided to send for him. It was at this point in verses 31 through 37 that I saw a young man who had a relentless vision. So while my broad topic for today is having a relentless vision, my subtopic is knowing who you are in Christ. Five steps to developing a personal vision. Today, I will give you five steps, five steps that I noticed in reading this chapter to having a relentless vision because I decided today that I'm going to pull a page from this young boy's book, this youth by the name of David. Let us first explore the definitions of the words relentless and vision. These are definitions that I found online thanks to Google and I really liked them, so I thought to share. So here we go, a relentless vision defined. The word relentless means determined to do something and refusing to give up, single-minded, unstoppable, persistent, the word vision means being able to see, the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. When you have a relentless vision, you see yourself, your life, and your future a certain way. And in your mind, no one or no thing can stop you from obtaining or bringing to life that which you imagine. So what is the first of these five steps? Step number one, define your vision. I love these. Helen Keller said, the most pathetic person in the world is someone who has sight but has no vision. John Scully said, the future belongs to those who see possibilities before they become obvious. A Japanese proverb states, with vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. Jack Welch writes, good business leaders create a vision, articulate the vision, passionately own the vision, and relentlessly drive it 
to completion. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Look at that first part again. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So my questions for you today are, number one, what is your vision for you? And number two, how do you see yourself and your life playing itself out? The people in David's circle did not see him as a skillful warrior. However, David's vision of himself differed. In verses 34 through 35, David said to King Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. So in David's own bird's eye view of himself, he was a skillful warrior. And in the end, this self-perception proved beneficial to his victory as it was he who stood up and faced Goliath while every so-called warrior was running scared. We are dealing with knowing who you are in Christ and defining your personal vision. To create and articulate a vision, you should first establish what mission you are on. For example, a personal mission statement can read, to obtain time freedom and financial freedom. Then you ask yourself, if I were to accomplish this mission, what would my life look like? Your answer to the question of what your life would look like if you accomplished your mission is your vision. So the vision I created for this is as I please in alignment with biblical truth. Meaning, if time freedom and financial freedom is obtained, this person can now live as they please according to the Bible standard. Meaning, wake up when you're done, sleeping, exercise more, travel more, say no a whole lot more. Uh, uh, you're not on anybody's job, etc., etc. You're volunteering, whatever it is that you please to do. So you have to know your mission that you're on. Ask yourself, how will my life look? And that's your vision. In defining your personal vision, it is imperative that you see yourself as God sees you. I want to reiterate that again. In defining your personal vision, it is imperative that you see yourself as God sees you. I have this book that you see on your screen by Dr. Cindy Trim called Commanding Your Morning. I absolutely enjoy reading her material. I enjoy this book so much. I'm a reader, by the way. And on pages 120 through 148, she has some biblical affirmations that you can use, you can recite them to help you to see yourself through the eyes of God. I want to share a few with you. It says, I am a campaigner of empowerment. My name is associated with greatness, nobility, holiness, ethical dealings, humility, love, peace, gentleness, faith, self-control, fairness, wisdom, luxury, health, prosperity, prayer and spiritual warfare, kingdom undertakings, 
it goes on it says in Jesus name I reinforce that I am a son of God I'm redeemed with the curse of the law I am a citizen of the kingdom of heaven I am crucified with Christ I am alive with Christ and I'm just reading a few I am the temple of the Holy Spirit I am a saint I am the elect of God I am set free I am a steward of great wealth I am above and not beneath I am first and not last I am being changed into his image I am overtaken with blessings blessed to achieve national prominence blessed in the city blessed in the field blessed to achieve fruitfulness in all areas blessed in daily provision and it just goes on and on and I absolutely love the words in this book I would encourage everyone to read it because of those affirmations that are in there it will help you in this particular point that I'm sharing in learning how to shape your personal vision perhaps you may need to change your words about yourself and use these words to help you to solidify and bring you into remembrance of who you are in Christ and once you affirm yourself on a daily you will begin to have more confidence confidence in Christ that godly type of confidence amen whatever your vision you must write it and make it clear like David this will provide or prove as a beneficial tool when you get in a position where you must face your Goliath when done on a daily your perception of yourself changes helping your vision of yourself to become more clearly defined okay so I would encourage you to get into your positive affirmations every day to help you with this one point so that we can be like this boy and have our vision of ourselves clearly defined amen step two envision yourself victorious one way to do this is to deal with your self-confidence David was confident in his ability to slay Goliath verse 32 says then David said to Saul let no man's heart fail because of him your servant will go and fight with the Philistine verse 36 further reads your servant has killed both lion and bear and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living God when nobody else did David saw the end from the beginning Proverbs 23 7 reads as a man think it in his heart so is he if you see yourself having victory in life and winning then it is more likely that you will win so let's pull this yet another page from this young boy's book David and begin to see ourselves triumphing over our Goliath step number three understand and accept the fact that not everyone will see you as you see yourself in verses 33 in verse 33 Saul said to David you are not able to go against this Philistine with to fight with him for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth Saul let David know right away that he and Goliath are no company again I say with having a relentless vision knowing who you are in Christ and developing your personal vision it is imperative that you understand and accept the fact 
that not everyone will see you as you see yourself and you must be okay with that God gave you the vision he gave it to you because he saw you responsible enough to carry it out stop looking for other people's approval to do what it is that God has already ordained you to do in this season when people reject the vision that God has mandated you to carry out, it is not you they personally reject, but rather the living God himself. If God thought that your uncle or your best friend or whomever else could carry out the vision, then God would have given it to them. Instead, God, the Almighty, gave it to you. Can you imagine the outcome of this story if at any point David decided to believe Saul? He would have never reached his full potential with the opportunity to be used by God to slay Goliath. It is the same with us. God gives us a vision. And what do some of us do? We allow the opinions of others to dominate our headspace, causing us to never reach our full potential and to be used by the living God. Lord, we repent this day. And we have decided that we are going to come on up a little higher in our thinking. Amen? Amen. Step number four. Be grounded in the word and speak it out loud. If we go back over this story, we will notice that as David was confident in his ability, so was Goliath. However, the difference between David's confidence in himself versus Goliath's confidence in himself was one was backed by the Almighty God, while the other was perverted, full of self and idolatrous in nature. Let us consider Goliath's type of confidence in verses 42 through 44 and when the Philistine looked about and saw David he disdained him for he was only a youth ruddy and good-looking so the Philistine said to David am I a dog that you come to me with sticks and the Philistine cursed David by his gods and the Philistine said to David Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Listen, have you ever watched the preview of a boxing match and how they brutally insult their opponent, all to terrorize their opponent and make them doubt themselves just so that they can gain an advantage and win i mean they do this to get in their heads to distort their psyche and just completely manipulate their thoughts in order to gain this advantage however this strategy did not work with david and why because david's vision of himself was clearly defined before he arrived on the battlefield. He was confident in his ability to emerge victorious and he was grounded in the things of God. David knew who he was, so Goliath's words carried absolutely no weight. Let me tell you this. 
other people's opinion of you is none of your business and it does not concern you I'm going to say that again for the people at the back other people's opinion of you is none of your business and it does not concern you this is their opinion therefore it is their problem not yours do not carry other people's weight on your shoulders this is called a false burden it is their opinion so let them go deal with it you carry on smartly and that was David's approach let us analyze David's type of confidence in verses 45 through 46 and his response to Goliath's negativity then David said to the Philistine you come to me with a sword with a spear and with a javelin but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel you see the boy David was smart enough and humble enough to know the source of his strength and to acknowledge his source out loud I encourage each and everyone under the sound of my voice to follow suit for it is when the boy David employed these steps he beat Goliath and emerged victorious and so can you against your Goliath step number five always remember that when God gives you a vision he will send the provision in verses 47 through 51 it reads then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands so it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him but there was no sword in the hand of David now watch this provision for the vision here in verse 51 it reads therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it and when the Philistine saw that their champion was dead they fled in conclusion not only did God provide 
for the vision, but he used the tools of the enemy to do so. I ask you today, who is your Goliath? Hmm? I decree and I declare over you today that the very skills, tactics, techniques, and tools that your Goliath is using to war against you in this season, God Almighty will turn it around in your favor and cause you to win while using Goliath's own weaponry against him. Woo! In the name of sweet Jesus, your Goliath will die today. Amen. I need somebody to shout right there. Today, your Goliath will come down. In the name of sweet Jesus. Hallelujah to the living God. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I honor your name today. Heavenly Father, I magnify your name, O God. For even though Goliath may come up against us in this season, Father, you know the name, you know every strand of here, you know all of us on this platform today, oh God, and you know what troubles us the most. You know, Father, who is our Goliath in the mighty name of Jesus. But today, oh God, you've reminded us, oh God, of the story of David versus Goliath, God, and you reminded us that once we stay grounded in you, once we stay in your word, once we declare it over our life, once we follow your pattern, your word, God, that we will win because we are in you. Almighty God, we give you praise, everlasting Father. In the name of sweet Jesus, Goliath comes down today. Enough is enough. Stay grounded in God. Stay grounded in his word. Blessings to all of you, my friends. And I will see you next week in the will of the Lord as we continue this series on having a relentless vision in the mighty name of Jesus. Go on ahead and just unmute your mics, open it up, and just give God a rousing round of applause in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I magnify your name. Today, Goliath, comes down. Jesus. Hallelujah.